Eller bolsjeviska att rösta till sig bra som massen tog dem bil fullt. Att jag tog dåra megen i änden bäckes kallar rullar tog eller bäck i ball hal tog tack. Eller pala zol tack där rizala tack. Eller fanment en kodjad sportet ja alla tjär alla kärna fabulor eller fabuli men tack. Halia bosen nagen såg eller vol tack. Istan det står och ramel fagen salen tog tack. Minden och zol tack. Il like in in horoban il bo standin in mala tek a da da tak. E zole dok ila mujutala il tali pradita tek mo zole tonk ila zina ala skos kent mergir kon zole zinta tek il valis sa sar sek bonnet ala kan kiet bo zinia al zuna al reza sa niet kalzo like pinia kenzit. The atrocities of the Bolsheviks filled the land with horror. Their agitators penetrated even into a heterotopical district. The peasants were terrorized by groups of men who went from village to village. Hill court marshals and with sadistic pleasure hang all those of the war who had been awarded the golden medal for bravery. The Jewish who had long been settled among us were the first to be retributed in the crimes of their so-called co-religionists, who the hands of the new regime almost exclusively rested. Miklos Horti de Nagibania Miklos Horti de Nagibania was born into Kendra's into an old Calvinist noble family that were the descendants from Isvan Horti, a noble by King Ferdinand II in 1635. His father, Isvan Horti, was a member of the House of Magnets, the upper chamber of the Diet of Hungary, and the lord of 1,500 acres of estate. He married Paula Halalassi in 1857 and Miklaus was the fourth of their eight children. Horty entered the Austro-Hungarian Imperial and Royal Navy Academy or the Kaiserslich und Kanglich Marinin Academy at Fiamin, which is now Ryadjaka in Croatia at the age of 14. Because the official language of the Naval Academy was German, Horty spoke Hungarian with a slight but noticeable Austro-German accent for the rest of his life. He also spoke Italian, Croatian, English and even some French. Horty chose to go to naval school after his older brother was killed by accident during a training exercise at the naval school, and his abilities were more oriented towards practical knowledge rather than theory, and his career was characterised by two major opportunities. First, First in 1908, during the crisis following the annexation of Bosnia-Herzegovina by Austria-Hungary, Horty was in command of an embassy ship in Constantinople, and his reliability was appreciated by Makarev Johan Polovichny, the Austro-Hungarian ambassador, who then recommended him in Vienna, and Horty was selected to be one of the adjacents of Franz Josef I, Emperor of Austria in 1909. This position was again paradoxical because Horty was the only second naval officer in charge, the other adjacents belonging to the Landwerfer, the Lufentruppen or even the Honved, he was also a Hungarian, and because he was not Catholic but a Calvinist, however, however he not only made himself popular among the court members, but among them was the future Emperor Charles I and the V of Hungary, but his wife also contributed to his career by being acquainted with prominent persons. At the beginning of World War I, Horty was in command of the pre-dreadnought battleship SMS Habsburg. In 1915, he earned a reputation for boldness while commanding the light cruiser SMS Nord Verona. He planned a 1917 attack of the Oriental Barrage, which resulted in the Battle of the Straits of Oriental, the largest naval engagement of the war in the Adriatic Sea. The consolidated British, French and even Italian fleets met the Austro-Hungarian forces. Despite the numerical superiority of the Allied fleet, the Austro-Hungarian forces emerged from the battle victorious. The Austrian fleet remained relatively unscattered, however Horty was wounded, but he still commanded his ship until he was bled to unconsciousness, although he made a full recovery. In June, Horty planned yet another attack in Oriental, and in a departure from the cautious strategy of his predecessors, he committed the Empire's battleship to the mission. While sailing through the night, the dreadnought SMS Tizvan Itzvan met the Italian mass torpedo boats and was sunk, causing Horty to abort the mission. But he managed, however, to preserve the rest of the Empire's fleet into being until the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes were formed. As the National Councils of the Nationalities were formed and became into being in October 1918, the entities of whom power was transferred to, Horty was obligated to deliver the ship that was still harboured in Pola, or Pulu, to the Kingdom of Slovenes, Sovines and Croats, or the Yugoslav National Council. Horty had to leave the Austro-Hungarian flagship bearing the Emperor's last motto, Vinitabos Unitas, Joint Forces, just as the monarchy ceased to exist. As a symbol of this demise, the ship was mined by the Italian divers and sunk together with the newly appointed Croatian commander, Junkov Junkovic which had been Horty's second-in-command, actually. At the end of the war, Hungary turned into a landlocked nation, 
and hence the new government had little need for haughty services and of course naval personnel as a whole. He and retired with his family to the private estate in Kendris, but his role as a Hungarian leader was far from over. So Horty was basically the Prime Minister for life in the early 1920s. Even though you could vote for whoever you please, Horty and his party made sure that no one ever won. So in the late 1930s, Horty's foreign policy made him into a reluctant alliance with the Germans against Soviet Russia. With the Brugadian support of Adolf Hitler, Horty was able to recover certain Hungarian lands, removed from them by the Allies in World War I. Under Horty's leadership though, Hungary gave support to the Polish refugees in 1939 and participated in a supportive as opposed to a frontline role in the German invasion of the Soviet Union or Operation Barbarossa in 1941 and during the German invasion of Yugoslavia the same year and he had actually occupied and annexed former Hungarian territories which had been given to the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes in World War I but this is now the 1930s so they are now known as Yugoslavia by the Allies after the First World War. However, Horty's reluctance to contribute to the German war effort and the Holocaust in Hungary, as well as refusing to hand over Hungarian Jews to the German authorities, coupled with several attempts to strike a secret deal with the Allies of World War II, eventually led the Germans to invade and take control of the country in 1944 in Operation Margarita. In October 1944, Horty announced that Hungary had declared the armistice to the Allies and withdrew from the Axis. He was forced to resign and placed under arrest by the Germans and was taken to Bavaria. At the end of the war, he came under custody of the American troops. After appearing as a witness in the Nuremberg war crime trials in 1948, Horty settled and lived out his remaining years in exile in Portugal. His memoirs, Eden Leben for Ungar, A Life of a Hungarian, was first published in 1953. He is perceived as a controversial historical figure in Hungary to this day. He would die on the 9th of February 1957 at the age of 88 in Ostro, Portugal. Despite all the odds, this Hungarian man, Miklaus Horty de Nagabania, would rise to the top of the Austro-Hungarian throne before it fell, became kind of the president for life, and even saved some Jews in World War II. And of course, the contemporary history of Hungary says that he might have actually led some Jews out of Hungary, but he was also a top of the aristocratic family, which kind of despised Jews at that time. So he was a man of the times, but still, he defended some Jews from the Holocaust, even though 40,000, I believe, went to the Holocaust chambers in Auschwitz and Nuremberg. But those are stories for another day, and this is just a brief introduction of him in World War I. There's the exile, there's the running away, and of course there's the Hungarian Jewish population and problems. And of course, in 1939 he let the Polish in, which created more problems and withdrawing from the Axis. But that's all a bigger story for another time. I just thought I would add some um, Fortune Jäger 44 Gewehr gameplay in this video, because I had that for years now, so it's time to delete it and try and get some space. I need to get some space on my hard drive, so hope you enjoyed Miklaus Horty de Nagabania. And I hope you learn something. Um, I'll have one from every faction, I guess. So this is the navy one. Um, the next one is Bromowski, which is a ace. And of course, we have someone from the Landwerfer or the Hundred. I don't know. He could be from any nationalities. But let's see what's going on. Anyway, guys, hope you learned something and hope you enjoyed. Man that was bigger than life, the captain of the ship, Miklaus Horty Nagabanya. Learn something. A kormányzójának a magyar nemzethez intézett szózata következőkkel zárul. Minden becsületesen gondolkodó magyar embert pedig felhívok, hogy kövessen a magyarság megmentésének áldozatos útját.